Hey guys, my name is Steph, and this is my first ride on a one-wheel pint. Now before I begin, I just want to give a big thank you to Richard from Edmonton. Thank you so much for selling me the Sage Pint. I couldn't find it and I've been, I've been wanting it for a long time. So thank you. And uh, thank you for this, this, uh, this very through packaging job. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right, so let's begin. Here I'm trying to get on the pint and it is not my first time on the pint. I have practiced uh, starting getting on this mounting a couple times and just making sure I have an okay balance before doing this which I highly recommend you do, especially if you are a beginner. Um, as you can see, it took a few tries, but that's before I realized that in the app, there's a setting where you can toggle um, if you ride goofy like I do. So without, with with my the, the pint, the settings um, set to regular, it was actually harder for me to, it was harder for the sensor to detect my, my foot placement, but it also made it easier for me to get off the pint normally by lifting my my heel so um definitely if you ride goofy make sure to turn that setting on because it will actually make a pretty big difference all right so here you can see that i'm going really really slow probably like five kilometers an hour less than on average and i'm just getting a feel of you know the board it's a little bit wobbly so i am an experienced skateboarder i've been skating for years and um usually small boards like 32 inches or smaller i don't like long boards very much but i do have a cruiser 27 inches that i really really like and i also have a skateboard for tricks and other kinds of stuff but for street riding my favorite is cruiser so i do have that kind of balance and that kind of experience and i found that uh, even even I have even also been snowboarding and that is my favorite sport and wow I am I ramble a lot so uh, yeah um anyways so the pint is really wobbly um, you can't stand on it the same way that you would stand on like a skateboard for example it it requires a little bit of um I guess torsion where you you should put like pressure on the um, the heel of your back foot and the toes of your front foot to kind of and like alternate between those to make it easier to keep the board steady and i found that the slower you go the harder it is to to keep the board from shaking so uh stance wise i found that your your back foot should be straight like don't or or tilted um, parallel to your front foot which is usually like 45 degrees tilting outwards one thing that i really wanted to know that no one really talked about is the feel of the board compared to one with four wheels for example or maybe maybe people talked about it and i just couldn't find the info anyways um the reason i chose the one wheel over the other boards is because the wheel is so big that you can ride on whatever the heck you want now I love skating, I love carving streets. The the feeling you get, or the feeling I get from that is, is incomparable to anything else. It's my absolute favorite thing in the world. So I have to say that on the one wheel, you don't get that same kind of feeling. It's, it's not, you can carve on it, but it's a different kind of technique than if you were to carve on a four wheel board. So if you're like me and you like, you love carving and long boards and doing all that stuff then maybe it's better to get an electric four-wheel board instead of this one but if you're a lover of snowboarding this really does it really does feel like snowboarding the the whole pointing um turning your whole shoulder and turning your whole body thing that's really cool and especially one thing that this board is amazing for is trail riding i tried riding this on the grass and it was it was amazing. It was a lot better than riding on the streets. The little bumps and um, the board kind of fighting you and trying to throw you off. That was challenging and that was probably my 
favorite thing to do on this board. Carving the streets is also pretty fun, but I, I think until I figure out the right technique to do it, it doesn't feel exactly like a, a skateboard with four wheels. And that's just, it's not as nice for me. But um, yeah, definitely, definitely consider that before making your purchase. Now, another thing that I've noticed that I didn't really expect is um, obviously wear protecting wear helmet, you know. Uh, wrist guards, you you probably won't need it unless you're doing something that you know is dumb. And uh, I've taken mine off because I, I felt like I didn't really need them. But one thing that is useful would be gloves when you're touching that grip tape or sometimes you lose your balance and you, you, you like touch the floor to try to, you know, get your balance back. Your hands get scratched up pretty, pretty, pretty quickly. So I definitely recommend gloves and also jumping off the board sometimes the board will go spinning and it'll hit you in the in the shins or the ankles it's probably a good idea to wear um shoes that have higher you know whatever the heck you call that thing to protect your ankles or or wear ankle guards or something and uh, i have to say the battery life on this thing is pretty impressive i'm i'm a small person i'm under 160 centimeters and i'm under 120 pounds and i was able to ride about nine kilometers for maybe like 20 25 percent not not a lot of percentage I, I i'm pretty sure on a full charge i could i could go for 20 kilometers easily or at least 15. so yeah all in all amazing board and i, I really really love it i've already gotten 9 km on my first day my, you know my, my foot's already going numb but i'm so excited to do it again tomorrow so i hope you guys like my rambling and that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. And, and here's me trying to get off. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs>